Hey, Fitzy here, back at the game with another one. I'm at the old Tioma. If you remember when I took it all apart, how rusty she was in around the, the trunk opening here. Well, I got it all fixed here now. I'm going to show you how I repair it all. Stick around. So let's get started. First thing I went and did is I uh, removed all the tail lights and everything out of it. Uh, get them out of the way so I don't melt them. Same with the side ones. Um, quick little uh, tip is to put all your bolts and everything back and bolt it all back together. It could be months, in my case, probably years. <laughs> let's hope not. But uh, long period of time to uh, find remember how everything comes apart. So just bolt all your stuff back onto your pieces again so that we know where everything goes. Plug in all your wiring whatnot. So you got all that straight away. Anyway, back at this again. I got that all cleared out. We're going to start inside the trunk lid here today. I'm going to work on getting this section up here done. Getting that fixed. And these corners. I'm going to see how much I can get done today. But uh, what I'm going to do here first, because I'm going to end up cutting a lot of this out. We have a little bead here. I don't know if I'm going to put it in or not. Because uh, i got to make both corners, as you can see. Both corners are gone. But I'm going, to, I'm going to cut it down along here and keep everything flat in this area here to make this entire section again. Now them little beads were for strength. This metal here, I'm willing to say, is probably uh, 20 gauge probably. I'm going to be making it out of 18. Up here, I'm going to make up this section first, this section, and then I'm going to make the face to go on it. Now up here, this bottom piece, you could probably... Bend a piece on 90 and use it in a um, shrinker and bend this in to get this shape because this is not straight. I'll show you. The hole right there, you can see how much that how much of a twist is on it. Uh, this way here, this looks to be here it's tight in the middle, and then it wanders up again on the end, see? Focus, there you go. <clears throat> so the plan is that I'm going to make up this piece, this piece, and this piece. Um, because I haven't got a shrink or stretcher, I'm going to make it. Um, some people would say bend this here on a 90 and then bend it up and then just shrink everything. Uh, it's a lot of work. I, this here panel here, you're going to end up warping it if you turn around and start bending this because this is not on a 90 this is on an angle and then it turns it rotates like this as well so there's a lot going on there yes it can be done with the uh, proper metal tools uh, but we're doing using basic tools a grinder and a mig welder and a hammer and a few voices and stuff like that that's the extent of it so we're just going to make it out of three sections weld it all together and dress it up now down here, um, first thing I got to do is I went and got a piece of cardboard. Oh, it's only going to have templates, but not really. But what I plan on doing here is I'm going to use this to mark out my shapes. I'm going to use this here to mark out my shapes to go along there. I'm going to give myself a couple of reference points that are up and out of the way up here and down here. And all I do is I just clamp it in place. And I've after marking it along here, and I've after marking it along here, and I put a little mark right here on this here, so I know where it's got to go against it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this off, put this in the bench, and I'm just going to wing this section here. So you can see here with the pencil mark. That's all I went and did. I just took the pencil and just roughed it in. So you know, you look at it, it uh, it flows. So that's the way it should be. So I'm going to cut this out and now then I'll have a template that I can go back to to reference that corner. Okay, I got that cut out. That'll fit in there now, like so. That would be my reference to get that corner right. And all I got to do is flip it over for the other side. Lay that in place there, like so. And then I got a reference for that side. So now that I got that done, I'm going to lay that aside. And I go ahead now and cut up some uh, a piece of steel to get started on that. I'm just going to take a, a random piece now. I'm just going to cut it off from there to there, 
probably make it come up a little bit higher than it because of the way I've got to cut it. So cut that out now. Now I went ahead and I cut a strip out, just I think it's two and a half inches, three inches wide maybe. And I went and uh, lined it up in the middle where that, there's a brace there. If you look at it, there's a brace that comes out underneath it. I went and uh, lined it up so it was flat against there. For some reason I was thinking this here was going to be curved, but it's not. It lines up really well. With a straight edge there, goes right to that corner there. Lines up good. And over here, lines up good with that inner edge. So what I'm going to do now is that I know that I, I thought that was going to be like this. I thought that was going to be sure shape like that, but it's not. So perfect. So now all I'm going to do now is I'm going to trim this down because I'm only going to come through so far. This I'm going to use this piece here for this flat side now. So I'm going to mark this now, cut this off, and start fitting this bottom section in. I'm going to remove these lips from here and here for the time being till like it's the bottom laid in place because they're going to be in the way. Like I've said many times before, I don't remove nothing out of the way because I'm using it to get my shape because this is not straight up and down. You look at it from this angle here, you can actually see that that's on a bit of an angle. It's on an angle this way. It's not straight up and down this way. So you got to uh, take that into consideration when you're making it all the pieces. But like it's a nice fit there now. So, And the reason why I'm replacing this piece is because this these, these sections in it that are very weak on the corner. So I'm going to come up an inch and cut it off and weld it on up here so it gives it a little bit more strength because I know for a fact that down here about to here it's going to be it's going to be spots that's going to be really really thin so I'm going to trim that up now and test it again I went ahead and cleaned it all up in along here and I found a few more holes in along here so I gotta do some work to that and another one over here and there's another little small one right there but hey another hole anyway so I went ahead and I cleaned everything up around there uh, to just to see how bad everything was I got the piece cut out to go up here now I'm gonna fit it in place but you can see like right here it's pretty bad we're right close to the edge so what I'm going to uh, that's the reason why I'm coming up an inch or two in order to do it so I'm gonna put the piece in place then I'm gonna work on making this flat section here next and after I <clears throat> make this first Okay, I got this clamped in place here now, and the problem you're going to run into in situations like this is you can see there's a lot of movement here in the metal. So what I'm going to do here now, I'm going to tack weld this in place just temporarily, just so that it holds it all good, because this here will play an effect in how well you make this bottom piece. So I'm going to lay this in place, because you come over here, you can see the same thing going on over here. Now I can stick a whole bunch of voice scripts on it, but it's going to be in the way of you trying to fit this bottom piece. So I'm going to uh, just hold these in place here now, and work my way along and I'll put a couple of tacks in along there just to hold it so it doesn't move. Now I got the piece clamped in place here now and that's tack welded in place. Uh, quick note, every time you go tack welding panels onto anything just keep in mind that can I cut that off at the grinder when I goes to put my weld on. Make sure that you can get your grinder in or you can cut it off. Uh, like don't go weld it down in these corners and whatnot because you'll have a hard time cutting it. Just keep it up on a flat edge where you can get a cotton wheel back in there and cut it. Now, I got this here, a flush against it here, and I got it evenly spaced out on here either end. Right here. Now, when I measure that up, I get roughly about this much distance. So if I come to the middle here, measure that there, that's not leaving me much on this side for a lip. If you look at the lip, this section here is pretty wide, right? So what I'm going to do here now, is I can go and cut another piece that I would have to cut another bit wider, a whole strip, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cut this piece right in half here in the middle now, and that way I can turn it a small bit and straighten it up here and uh, close up the gap so I can re reuse this entire panel. All right, I got to cut off now, cut in half, and I got to fit back in there again. I got to turn another bit of an angle so that closed up the gap here on the ends. And you can see now, I always go from the center of my bend and I'll always butt it in the center. Like I won't start from one end or the other end and then work my way across. I like to start in the middle that way. It works out a lot easier. And all I went and did is I measured this distance here and this distance here and got to them the same. And then I just took this scribe and I just turned around and I marked it like so, using this here as my guide. I marked the line there like that. And then fade it out, and you're left with a little mark. What I'll do now is I'll cut that off along that line there, and that'll butt up against that. All right, so I got a cut, 
and then I went and fit it and then I grinded the edges of it and make it snugger and whatnot and uh, got it so fit nice and all I used was the uh, air grinder I just used that there to grind the edge off it just the little slivers that I was taking off as you can see that's what I was cutting off it so I uh, I got that fitting nice there now so that's ready to weld on in there but first before it does that I want to make this and the other piece the same so I used this template here and flipped it over and marked the other piece and grinded that off and then I got that to fit here and then I turned around and I uh, scribed them here in the middle so they could butt weld there so what I'm going to do first now is I'm going to clamp this in place I'm going to butt weld two of them and finish that off there so that is done because it's going to be kind of hard to weld all this in here and dress all this inside edge so I'm going to have this all dressed and done I've said it before in many other videos um, take it one piece at a time add a piece to it finish off the two pieces make it one then move on to the next one right now i got three pieces on the go here which is too much so i'm going to make these two a one again as you can see the way the fit goes across there now it's a nice fit so i'm going to weld two of these together now so here it is now i'll weld it back together again it's one piece again i left it like that there you can actually see where i welded it together i welded on both sides and i grind and dress the top side because that's the one i'm most concerned with so now you can take that there now and put that in there and I'm back with the piece ready to go back in there now. It's all one piece. So now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to weld that on here in them corners. I'm going to clamp it in place and weld that on. And then I'm going to dress this inside edge because that's going to be the edge you're going to see. So I clamped it in place in uh, three spots. There's a brace there. There's a brace there. So I clamped it onto that. And then I went ahead and I tack welded it across there. So now I got... Uh, this plane here is right, and this one here is right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and weld all that up, cross there, and grind and dress that. And I think I might be able to do most of that on the car. I'm going to see what I can do. And I'll get that ready before I get into doing this out section, outside section here. So I got it all welded up, all the way along there. All I did is I welded every inch or so, and then I come back and weld it again. This here, I ended up running little beads here and there along it because we're a small piece and where it was too, it's not out on an open panel. So it's a lot easier to let the heat go on it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come back here. I'm going to leave this right where it's too for now. And I'll come back here and I'm going to grind all this because I don't need to take it all out of it. I just, because i got to put a round edge on it. As you can see in here, there's a little roll round edge in it. So I'm going to round this out best common. When it takes the panel off and gets ready to install it, I'll weld the back side of it. So I'll grind it up there now. So I got that all grinded up. I just done it with a grinding stone here. That's all I did. I just done it with a regular grinding stone, grinded it off, and then I dressed it up with the 24 grit disc on the outside edge of it. So I got that all done. It's a nice edge going right along there now. And now we're back to one piece again. It's a lot easier to do this now than it is when you put this other lip on it because you'll never get in there. It's very hard to get in there. So I got all that done. Now, what I, all I went and did is out here on the edge, you can actually see I got it scribed. I've done the same thing again. Using the inside edge, I laid it up against it and just scribed it along there and got my line to go along there. I don't know if you can see it. There you go. See a bit of a line there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that off there along that line. And then I'm going to work on making this upright. Now when making the uprights, you would think that all you're going to do is cut a little tiny strip of metal and put on it. No, make a big piece. Nice big piece, inch, inch and a half wide or more. And weld it on because the problem you're going to have now is when I scribe this here I got to scribe on the outside of this so because this got to go back and down so when I put the piece on I got to have sort of it's out past this here now so when I drop this down it goes back it'll line up with the this outer lip here but if you're st working with a larger piece it's a lot easier to control because when you start welding the small piece it's all going to go all wiggly and everything on you so cut a larger piece out to make that and all that is just a straight strip so I'm going to trim that off right there where it's still on the car and then I'm going to cut a strip out and uh, fit that under well I guess I never had the camera turned on for that one uh, I'll try this again I went ahead and I cut the strip I got it about an inch wider and then I clamped it on up here so I went and did you can see where it overlaps here a little tiny bit so that's because this got to go back this whole panel do and uh, it wasn't exactly like if you look at the way the welds are 
they move up and they go down so this here whole panel's kind of got this thing going on this this panel here down here so I went ahead and clamped it in place and then I tack welded the back side in there now what I'm gonna do now I got it all tack welded together I'm gonna take it off the car you see it's overlapped over here as well and I'm gonna weld this up trim up the bottom weld it up on the outside grind dress it all up and get it ready to reinstall I'll cut this lip to proper height that it's supposed to be uh, according to this over here I'll leave it a little tiny bit long all right I won't cut it precisely this height because when it's all said and done I like to take the grinder then and grind over the top of it and just make two of them even all I did is I went back and I cut all them welds off and I got it so I can take the panel off and as you can see the original is still there I haven't removed none of it yet and this is what we're left with you can see that panel now on the bottom the way it's shaped we're gonna to have to trim that off and on the inside I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to weld all this up and grind it all up and get it ready to install again. So there's the panel, all made up. You can see the way it's shaped, the way it's curved. Like trying to make that uh, with a shrinker stretcher, you got a lot of curves to play around with. Uh, making that in three pieces, welding it together. I'm going to say I got roughly about. I say two, three hours, I'd say, into this, making this up. So what I got to do now, I trimmed up the outside edge, and I cleaned up the bottom. Uh, there's a lot of meat, a welding and everything inside here, on this inside edge, right here and right here. Uh, so I never bothered to weld the back side, you can if you want. I grinded off the front edge and I had enough penetration there that it was there. So I wanted to leave that nice cool clean little edge for when you, you see that inside the trunk, right? That edge there and that's what the rubber slide down over. So what I got to do now is I got to come over here now and all I'm going to do is I'm going to fit it and mark it. Trim up this section here and cut it up across here and down on an angle. I'm going to butt weld it right here, get a fit so it butts. Clean that off there. Clean this off here. I'm going to trim all this off along here just to get all this stuff here out of the way clean this bracket off here and set it up so I can mark for spot welds and do the same thing over here I'll come in across here and come up and then come back on an angle so that I can remove all this here so this here is already flush mounted where it got to go and this, this here could be plug welded right here as well so I'll get that done as well and up here as I'll do is I'll leave all this alone for now and when it's fit in place then I'll do the 45 cotton butt and weld that in place there so I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to clean all this up and get it ready to uh, weld it on. All I went and done is I colored that with a bit of marker there and I took a scribe then I scribed that edge there because I'm cutting this here flush mounting it so then when I let it go and remove the panel this is what you see so now I'll cut that line and I'll cut it across here a little tiny bit and I'll cut it back on an angle and I'll just cleave all this off out of the way so then I know that my edge here and my edge over here is where it's supposed to be and across the top here so that I'll have a nice clean edge to butt against so here's all I went and did I cleaned that area up and cut her back here and I cut her up and there's my line there and I just cut her back on an angle here and I just trimmed off the bottom of this here of all the old jagged stuff that was in my way so I can uh, I'll cut and butt that but I got it here now so I'm down to the level here and I'm in to where it got to be there right here I cleaned it all up got that ready for spot welds same with over here and cut that corner up here now the panel all I went and did is I put it on I marked it on the back side and then I drilled a couple of holes there and a hole there and there will be my spot welds now you can see I got a clamped in place here it's flush here it's flush here I got it sunk back into that there and then I got a clamp down here and there's my spot welds for that bracket and the same one over here She's flush here and she's flush here. So what I'll do now is I'll weld up this section here, the spot welds on both sides, and then I'll come along here, put a couple of tacks on that to hold it in place, and I'll just do the cotton butt along there and weld it all in place. And then as you can see, the height is it's a lot higher, so now I can trim it down after the fact. I got lots here to weld to. Right? To weld that up. So there's the panel in place. So I got to weld it on this end here, and the spot weld is done, and I got it uh, just spot welded on place just to hold to the panel in place, and then I got that plug welded there, 
and I got a welder on this side here. I haven't welded this outside lip yet. I'm going to leave that till after. That's only cosmetic. And what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to start cutting across here now uh, to do the cut and buff. Some have asked about these welds here. I'm cutting through them. They're only temporary. That's all they are. They're just to hold the panel tight. Uh, some people try to use screws and stuff like that. I just like to tack welding in place. So then I know where the panel is going. And when I, as it comes across, I just cut through it again. A lot of times I just re-weld the same spot again. But it, I, I'm trying to flush mount this metal here now is what I'm going to do. You can see my fingernail on it there now. So when I cut through this here, this will fall back. And then I'll uh, spot weld it and come right on across here the same way. Now, you see, I cut across here. And I cut through that weld that I had there. But now look, it's all flush mounted now. I can't hit my, my fingernail on it. Right across it. So that's all fall in, fell in now. And there's a piece in behind it that you can hear there. That I'll cut off later on. As I cut across, that piece will come off. So I'll just come in here and I'll start working my way across, spot welding this here again. Won't solid weld it because you'll end up welding that inside piece back on again. So I'll only tack weld it on and start working my way across, doing four or five inches at a time. And then uh, you'll see it because if you cut too far, this will fall in too far. This bottom piece will start going in or the top piece will come out. So there it is, all cut and butt, right on across through there. Right. Reach up and underneath. Here's the piece to come out of there. Just cross there like so. We have corners to cut on it like that. And that's garbage. So that's that one. Now all I gotta do is go back and finish welding it all up. So there it is. All welded in. And dressed up. I went ahead and I went and repaired these corners then. Made up little small pieces and welded them. I, mean, I wasn't going to go video on that. It was a bit tedious work, right? Because it was a few holes here and I just cut sections out and welded in new pieces. Did the same thing over here as well. So I got all the back side. All the back of it is done now. Finished. So now I can move on to do these. <laughs> So here's what I went and did. I went and cut everything out of the way that was bad. I, I'm left this shape of it here. This is the bottom of it here, the bottom lip. So this will go straight out from here, from this. And then this here upper lip was gone all along here. So I removed that too because this piece here is underneath this and underneath this as well. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to make a piece to go in here. Now what I noticed when I cut it off is over here this is a little piece I cut off. There's an actual lip, this here lip, I cut this off, that went along the top edge of it. It went along the edge of it like this. It went along the edge of it, which is bent on a 90 to give it strength. So I'm going to make this inside piece first and put a 90 on it, right here. That'll give it a bit of strength. And there's that little bead I was talking about. I don't know if I'm really going to bother with that. I really don't. I think I'm just going to eliminate that. I'm not doing a complete restoration on a... Uh, Daytona charger or nothing here, am I? So, as long as it looks clean, that's the key to it. And I'm making that a heavier gauge steel, so it's going to be just as strong. So, I'm going to go ahead now and start making up this panel here. Here's all I went and did. I had a scrap piece of steel, I already got 90 bent on it. So, I'll trim that off after. And I just measured it over 6 inches and up 6 inches. I'm just going to start with a square piece. And here's what I'm measuring from measuring from this corner here over 6 inches to where it ended. And then I measure from here up, there's a, I can feel it in underneath there. From there down to this corner here is six inches. So this piece is going to go in behind this as well. But it's going to go right from this corner. So I, all I'm doing is cutting a flat square piece now to lay in place first. So here's what I got done. I got the piece of metal cleaned up. I went over and marked it. I cut it off so there's only a little lip on the bottom like it was from factory. As you can see here. There's only a little lip on the bottom side edge of it. Uh, that little bead, I've been looking at it. It's more trouble than it's worth. I'm not even going to bother with it. The bead was about right here and it went up about two inches. You can see it better on this piece here. You can see the way the bead was. And it just ended. I just really don't see any need for it. So I'm not going to bother with it. Anyway, what I did is I come over here and I mounted this underneath this hair like so. And I marked it. And I ended up getting this kind of cut so this fit in this corner like so. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clamp that in place here. And I'm going to weld that on right where it's to there now. Not going to worry about that corner edge yet. Because I got to... Uh, Put a template and everything over that so I'd soon weld it on and then I'll cut it, cut it to fit. I welded it all up solid. 
and then I just turn around and I grind it all smooth. It's time to work on this now is because when you start putting all these other pieces in, you're not going to be able to do it after. So you finish off the inside panel first and work your way out. Now before I go adding this piece on and adding this piece on, I want to put the lip on this here. And you remember that template that we had, that I had made up over here. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay that on there like so and mark it. Cut it off and then put a lip on it. Simple as that. See, all I did is I laid the template in place where it was too, with the angles and everything, and that line up on that edge, that line up on that edge. And only really going to fit in one spot when you, when you line up that edge and you line up that edge down here, right? And then you just mark this line, and there you go. Now, the whole thing with this is, is the, the upper lip that comes off of this overlaps this, as you can see over here. This is on the outside, so this will fit inside here, and I will say the same thing was going on down here, is this fit outside this one here, which is over around here somewhere. So i got to take that into account as well. It looks like it actually goes thinner there. It goes in a small bit, so it's not too much concern about. So I'm just going to cut that off, just like it is there, and then I'm going to put a, uh, an edge on it to come straight up from it. So as you can see, just found a uh, tab of steel over underneath the bench that had a nice straight edge on it and I just went in after I cut the piece off and just went in and tacked it in place. Uh, never overthink it, like don't go trying to make the perfect piece to go down around or give yourself something that you can move around and play with, something with a bit of height to keep the strength to it. <coughs> if you, you Set it up so that you can cut it off <coughs> after the fact and just turn around and take your time because that's really high, see? I don't even need half of that, but that piece was already made up there, I didn't have to trim it up or nothing, and all I did is I just welded it on. So I'm going to weld it on there now, grind and dress it, and trim it up, and show you what it looks like. So there it is, all grind up. Inside edge, the lip is there. Going around it. I still got it left a little bit long. Ooh, a bit of sharp metal there. Ooh. I feel good on the finger. So now i got to make up the piece to go here. Now, you might be wondering how I grinded this inside here. All I did was I used the, the larger grinding stone right here. And you can see there's a bit of a rolled edge on it now. I just used that, just took my time and grinded around it so I got a nice edge in there. So there's still lots of material on that inside edge in here. If you look closely at it, there's still lots of material in here from where it was welded. So you can see, you can still see the imperfections and everything. Right? Like, I'm, per like I'm, I'm human. I can go back and want to finish all that off nicer, but for what this car is, uh, that's, I'm happy with that. Like, if you look for perfection, you would go back and you would re-weld that again and grind and dress it and be just so, and you can finish it off. But I'm, I'm cutting my time back on this for what I got to do, for what it's for. Next thing I got to do is I got to make up this section here, which is pretty well straightforward. That got to come down, and as you can see here, there's where the factory one ended, right here. So I gotta come in across there and join that into that there and then go up and butt weld that there, butt weld that there, and it'll be a spot weld here and you'll actually see an edge along here. That's the way that'll go. So I'll do that piece next. And all I'm using for that is again, I went through my scrap bin. There we go. I'll just cut that to the length that I got here and install it. And one thing I noticed when I was looking at this side over here, and that's one thing of reference, you can see this kicks down. Because where this is flat, and this comes on a different plane. If you look at it this way here, you can actually see that it doesn't line up so much. It's that this is going downhill and this is going straight in. So when I get down here, I gotta put a little bit of a bend in it down here to uh, take in this here. So I'm gonna make up that piece now. So I got this little piece made up. I got a bent on a bit of an angle there. I got a hole drilled in it. And I got it left a little bit long here so it fits in underneath this lip here. I can grind that off, the, off after for the simple fact that when I fix this in place here now that I got something to weld to and I can grind off the back side. If you had to cut that so it was a perfect fit and you had light coming in between it on this edge here, it's getting kind of hard to give something to weld to. At least if you leave a little bit of an edge on the inside edge, uh, you could, you got something to weld to because the reason why I'm doing it that way because I can get at the back side after. So like that could be that wide in underneath there and you can cut it off after. Just as long as you got something there, like if you had to try to butt weld this right in there like so, uh, you would have a hard time welding this edge. At least now where this is underneath it, 
and fitting up against it like so in, under, in there, I got something that I can actually weld to. Now, how do I make this little bend in it? Let me show you. All I went and did is, all I'm doing is stretching the metal here. So as you can see, there's dents in it, that type of thing. All I did is I took the hammer and I tapped it in an area and stretched that metal, those two, and then pounded it to stretch it out. And that would actually make the top edge of this here longer. Don't do it down on the bottom here, as you can see. Concentrate on the top side here. That way it'll actually roll over in it. You got to hit it a bit on the bottom, but not a lot more to the top because you're trying to stretch it more on the top than on the bottom. Right? And that's all you do with it. It's basically how a stretcher works. It's just a bunch of little teeth that, that uh, hauls it apart. And that's why I'm using the flat side of this hammer here. To do, to do that you wouldn't be able to do it with a regular hammer if you haven't got one of these hammers you can actually use like a chisel something like this here and you can just turn around take that and hit that with your hammer along that edge there to uh, stretch it out and then just flatten it out and all you got to do then is just like all I did is I put it in the vise here clamped it in and gives give a little bit of a tweak just so I got the nice little crisp edge on the bottom side here that's all how I made that I'm going to install that now Got it all welded in place. Now up here, I had a little bit of a gap right here between the two panels and I had to fill it in. Uh, I've never shown this, uh, but this is a piece of brass I got. I got it a long time. I got it cut on the top edge. I got little notches cut in it, modified. All I use this for is for like filling in gaps, giving a backing. You lay it there and you can weld right to it and nothing will stick to it as you can see, right? Piece of brass. A lot of fellas use copper. A um, like copper pipe will work, but you'll end up burning it up. You need something half thick, uh, thicker than the material that you're welding to work. But I've got this a long time. It's just a big old chunk of brass, and I use it for you know filling in holes. If I can get this in behind it, I'll use it. Just a big old chunk of brass. Don't have to be round. I just so happens to find this could be a square piece. There it is, welded in, all grind dressed. Right. Take that from this side here. A little spot well went in here. Got a little angle on it like the other side. Here's where the quarter panel ends comes across. A little bit overlap, much the same as over here. See? I'll be done with that then. It'll be seam sealer put in here and along here. The way it was done factory. Same down here. Don't ever be concerned with like filling big large holes because a lot of times in factory applications when they fit two panels together usually right on the inside corners there's usually large holes and that's the reason why they're seam sealed uh, seam, the people don't really see it until they remove the seam sealer off guards so now I'm going to go ahead now and I'll bend up a little piece of metal now and make up this section here okay first thing I did I have a lot of that uh, stuff got 90 degree bends on it so all it is I just cut a section out of it like so and cleaned it up and I'll come over to the car here and what I did, I cut the piece longer, I cut it wider, right? So that when it fits on there, it's, it's pretty long. It was right here is where it was too. Now you can see over here I had to cut back this corner because this corner is supposed to fit on an angle like this. If you look at it over here, it just goes in on a corner like that. Don't be concerned about the lip as of yet because you got to get this to fit in this corner nice and get it to fit on this outside edge. nice. And then if you look down, you can actually see where this is going to end. Right? And you'll decide that then because each time you move this panel over, you're going to uh, change where that ends. So don't worry about getting this straightened away yet. That's why I cut it a bit longer because I'll just end up cutting this off here, off the car, to get it to work. Because it's a lot easier to remove metal than it is to add it. Alright, I got the piece made up. And I went and cut it and I trimmed it and I drilled the spot wells for it and got it all fitting so now this is what you got it'll fit in there like so and butt up over here and butt up against this outer lip edge and it'll line up with the factory seam and the quarter panel where it goes on the body a lot of people welds this stuff up I don't like it I like seeing this I see this stuff the car looks more original than it's just one of those things growing up in the, the field every time you uh, come across a car and all that was filled up, you knew that she had a lot of work done on her. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna tack that in place and start welding it in and when I get to tacked in place, I'll show it to you. 
So what I went and did is I went and lined it up on this outer edge here and I give it a few tacks along here working my way across. Wasn't worried about this end, wasn't worried about up in here at all because nothing was fitting good. It's very hard to get these panels to actually fit, like to get them to tweak and fit right where you want them to. I learned a long time ago that you just got to work with it, uh, weld so much, form it, and then go from there. So what I did is I went and made sure I had a nice edge along here and welded that on. At the time, this was sticking way up on this edge here. Then I worked this edge here, and brought this down. Now when I brought this down, this here was pushing down in here, so this here was all out of alignment. I never worried about it. I went and got this straightened up, and I was happy with that. Then I'll come over here and I work this area here, and I got that straightened up. Now I was happy with that, then I come over here and I raise this up, so I can actually plug well the spot here. And this here was bending forward because of it. So I turned around and I plug well at this spot here, and then I just hammer formed this section here, so it lined up. So like you, you sometimes you got to work the piece when you make it. It was just a straightforward piece, but uh, it got it's got sort of this thing going on like this here. It kind of flows like this in the in the car because this here starts to go uphill and then it's got to go back flat to here. So you got to work it as you're going. So I got it all in place. I'm happy with it too. I just got to plug weld it now and um, solid weld this across here and grind dress it up and then cut this off and then float it up around there. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld all this up and dress it up. So I went ahead and I welded it all up and I grinded it all up and then I dressed the lip so it was all the same width all the way around as you can see. So now it looks factory again. You can see there probably would have been that bead would have been right here but I got bothered with that. If you want to you can probably rig up something if you're really getting carried away with it and put a bead in there but I got bothered with it. But here on this lip I ended up welding this and grinding it and welding it a couple of times to get it to, uh, to fit nice with the tail light section. So I got that all done and everything's finished here. So what I went ahead and did then is I went over here and I finished this side. I've done the same thing, same process as I did on the other side. Just made up a piece, marked it out, put the lip on it, built it up. I ended up cutting a bit of this off, I didn't need to, but in order to make it work right I had to cut a section out of it because this side here was good. But uh, sometimes when you're working with something, it's good to probably cut in the good metal to do a do a process because I could have cut this off here and saved all this but it would have been hard trying to get this lap and you would have welded it here and then you would have been trying to get that seam back there right and I wanted to have that seam so I got it all done welded this one here was a little bit more trouble I had to put a, a section in above the taillight I never got when I got into it it was uh, pretty bad but the reason why I did this is I just went ahead and timed myself making all this up now you, you remember the way all this was and what I had the process went through, I have about, um, I was about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes making this up and repairing this. So uh, I already knew what I had to do and how to do it, so that cut the time in half. So I'll give you some idea how much time I have in this. I have a lot of people asking me about that, time and whatnot. So there you have the entire rust repair done all the way around the trunk opening. I'm very pleased with how it came out. It's Pretty simple process. Never used no fancy tools to make it all up. Just, you know, took my time making it all up. Anyway, that's it for this one. Hope the tips were good. And until next time.